going on guys, it's Brandon and I am going to try to combine four different topics which may seem unrelated but they definitely connect in my mind and it's just been like this epiphany realization and a lot of the stuff I already believed in and um, but uh, we're going to talk about this. Uh, so the four topics are uh, Andrew Huberman who's like a neurologist, smart guy, has great videos, self-help guy on YouTube, I'll suggest you watch some of his stuff. Um, I put up a couple of his videos the other day on my Facebook. And uh, the title of the video says something about, you know, like dopamine levels and porn and blah, blah, blah. But that's not even what 99% of the video is about. It's about other like interesting things. I had just, it was a video that clicked over on my YouTube and I just started watching it. I didn't even look at what it was called. And then, you know, I reshared it and I'm like, what the hell is it titled that for? It's not even what the video is about. But anyway, neither here nor there. Um, at least not the first hour. Okay, so anyway, um, the guy's really smart. He's a neurologist guy. Uh, reminds me of me, like the way that he says he's curious and he wants to like figure things out, just reminds me of me. I'm not saying I'm as smart as he is or whatever, just reminds me of me. Um, so there's him. Uh, there's another topic that I'm gonna combine here, which is the fungi that take over the insects. And let's just talk about this. There's certain fungi that take over insect bodies and then the insect walks up the tree and uh, then the fungi grows up in the tree. And so what's the advantage to doing this? Well, you're safe, because you don't have to get worry about getting stepped on by some big giant animal if you're a mushroom. And so you say, well, how's the mushroom do that? Great question, okay? That, it, basically what it does is it proves something very profound. And the first time that I saw that these fungi took over these insects, it just instantly lit up my mind. I, I learned about it years ago, and I was just like, this is huge. This proves that there's super intelligence on very small molecular scales. Because think about what they're doing. Think about what the bug is to the, to the cells. The cells can't see in our size world. Okay, the fungi cells can't see in our size world. It's like me saying to you, well, can't you see that other galaxy over there? No, you need an observatory, you need a telescope. Okay, you need that big thing that's on top of the fucking mountain in Hawaii, the big eyeball that looks across space. That's what a bug's eye is for the fungus. The fungus hijacks the fucking bug. It destroys the bug's ability to control its motor system and it takes over the motor system. And it doesn't just randomly walk willy-nilly, it walks in a very specific path up a fucking tree. Therefore, we know that it's using the eyes because it knows where it's going. So the reason why I bring this up is because I'm just going to touch on it here for a second, then I'm going to change topics again back to Andrew Huberman. The reason why I bring this up is whether you want to admit it or not, regardless what your religious beliefs vaguely say, okay, everybody from Buddha to a lot of other people have said, if you want to understand what you really are, you need to go down. You need to figure out the tiny things. So... I've said this before and I'll say it again, we are battle bots. And instead of the fungus, which needs to hijack a bug, an insect, to be able to get from point A to point B so it doesn't get stepped on. Darwinism here, guys, simple Darwinism. We are a very advanced life form where all of our bacteria and fungi and everything in our bodies, right, is hardwired to our eyes and it develops like this from stage one. We're like a bamboo seed, the sperm and the egg, and look at what it, it hatches. So what I'm saying is we are the little tiny guys. And what they do is they turn on the artificial intelligence. We are the artificial intelligence. You know the five Power Rangers or the Voltron where they create the bigger thing? We are the bigger thing. And when we go to sleep, they repair our AI supercomputer which references what the telescopes are seeing. The majority of what your brain does has to do with your taste, your nose, and your eyes, but mostly your eyes and your audio. And it's recording things and it's translating it, bringing it down to, in my simple observation, a different frequency which your smaller cells can understand. They can't see what we see. We're the AI bot. They're exploring the universe right now. This earth is their universe. 
This is the uncharted for them. They can't just travel from point A to point B. They need a mega big battle bot to get from point A to point B. And life is a fractal. For those of you who don't know what a fractal is, I highly advise you do your homework on repetitive fractals. What am I in right now? I'm in another machine getting from point A to point B even faster than I can get. Okay? So, Andrew Huberman brings up a very simple, great point in his videos about you don't learn new things like when you get scared. And he talks about when he was 18 years old and his girlfriend dumped him and he thought he was going to be a failure in life and how he started tucking in his shirt and going to school and he went all in on school like he did skateboarding. Now I've had a lot of situations in my life where I've been very scared. Growing up I was always scared because my stepdad was an asshole and he was huge. My other brothers and sisters don't know because they weren't alive yet, but when it was just me and him and my mom, it was not a good situation. And I always took a lot of pride that I helped my little brothers and sisters not have that same upbringing. Little did I know, he wasn't going to be as big of an asshole to them as he was to me because it had to do with stock in our family's business and he was trying to make sure that I didn't get any and he was trying to get me to get into drugs and fuck up so he treated me like shit every fucking day was disrespect wouldn't listen to my ideas told me I was stupid maybe I've got a fucking complex because of it but at the end of the day that's how I was fucking raised and it sucked there were never any hugs there was never any oh you did a good job Brandon there was never that it was constant 24-7 you're fucking wrong and the guy was smart so maybe I've got thin skin but I believe I deserve a little bit a little bit more fucking respect than what a lot of people give me. So that segues into our next topic. And I'm not trying to pick on him. I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to give no clues who the guy is. I've got a friend who I lit up last night. And he's one of my two close friends who has done me a lot of favors in life. Has really helped me out. But the one thing that really fucking sucks is... He and my other best friend, my two best friends basically in, in life right now, until another guy came along who is doing a better job at the thing that I'm complaining about that these other two guys don't do. These other two guys that I've known longer than the third guy who came along recently, these other two guys who I've known longer, they complain about specific problems. And I've mentioned this before about the currency stuff and inflation and all these different things. And I have these inventions. So they complain about these specific problems. I have a very viable fucking solution. Like, extremely viable. I can't find any flaws with it. I cannot get these guys to hold a fucking two-minute long conversation about the topic. And I've been trying for three fucking years. And so there comes a point where I say, either there's something wrong with me and there's something wrong with my idea, which I did for three years. I got depressed. I'm like, if I can't teach these two dudes who are smart and they're my friends and they care about not hurting my feelings, if I can't teach these guys about the idea, the rest of fucking humanity is not going to care. Who am I kidding that people want this solution? But what I really had to come to was, it's not even that people don't want it. It's not even that people don't aren't smart enough. It's that there's another factor at play. And the other factor at play is, when my two good friends always call me, they're drunk. They're drinking alcohol. And whether you noticed or not, we can't operate machinery well. We can't understand complex machines in the world around us when we're drunk. So lucky me, I get the disrespect of being forgotten about because the next morning when they're sober again and my conversation put them into super fucking drunk state because they realize they can't fucking understand what I'm talking about and I get frustrated with them. The upbringing and Bitcoin does this. The upbringing and gold does this. And I'm sitting there trying to explain the flaws to each of those and how I've invented something that has neither of their two flaws. The upbringing, the upbringing. And it just, I just finally fucking snapped on one of my buddies last night. Fucking snapped on his ass. Like, do you have any fucking clue how fucking dumb you sound? Do you have any fucking clue how disrespectful you are that three fucking years in, you can't even explain my invention back to me? What invention? <laughs> And so, um, I, I fucking snapped on the guy. Let him have it. And I still was like, you've been great on other accounts, don't get me wrong. But for me to have my mental health intact, in 
I can no longer deal with your bullshit. And those of you say, well, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have gotten mad. Well, remember back to that thing where fear causes you to change? I'm a big believer in barking really loud to scare the shit out of people, but not actually biting. That's who I've always been. And a lot of people who get bent out of shape when you bark real loud, they want to paint the false picture that you intend to bite them. Have I sued General Motors yet? No, I haven't. Have I created a website? Here's a video, sign here, the petition, let's sue General Motors? No, I haven't. I have barked and barked and barked. I tried to scare people into realizing, ah, I need to learn something here because the guy's scaring me. I have a flaw. What's my flaw? Now let's be real. The odds of me changing a person from drinking every night are very slim. But if I'm not honest with the dude that our friendship is in jeopardy because there's nothing left for me to gain from the friendship other than be very fucking depressed and frustrated every time the conversations end that he still doesn't fucking understand the invention. And if my own best friends can't fucking understand the invention, then how's the rest of the world going to get it when I believe the rest of the people are even dumber? Mostly. So... I finally got to a point where I'm just like, listen, I don't want to hear about Nancy Pelosi and all these people and how they're ruining your life because when I present the solution to you, you don't want the solution. And what's he say? The same thing any drunk fucking loser says. We need more people. We got to get more people involved. Okay, but first, can you even repeat the invention back to me, Jack fuck? Uh, 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 uh. So I gave him permission that he's only allowed to call me before noon every day because I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's not fucking drunk yet. That's the new rule. Call me before noon or don't call me at all. I deserve sober guy just like I give sober Brandon. And I started reflecting on my life and I realized so much of my fucking family and friends are really nice people who are drunks and druggies and just whatever. And I think that myself and my grandfather on my mom's side cause people a lot of mental anguish because we can see things that they can't see. I've realized recently that my grandfather on my mom's side is is probably autistic. It didn't dawn on me until the last few years. It finally like clicked. I'm like, he's he, we're like Rain Man. We have super gifts and we're also different. A lot of you called me out on Facebook and different things and said, this guy's on the spectrum. And at first I wanted to argue, but I sat back and I'm a realist. I can take an insult. I sat back and I thought about it. I thought about it. And I said, you know what? So be it. If I'm on the fucking spectrum, I wish there were more fucking people like me on planet earth. Maybe I'm on the spectrum. I joke around when I talk to people now on the phone. I'm like, apparently I'm on the fucking spectrum. Apparently being smart means you're a fucking autistic motherfucker. I'm on the spectrum now. Okay, but it's fine with me, whatever you want to call it. If you want to say I'm Satan, good. That means you guys are even worse. You, whatever you want to set the relativity bar to, that means you guys are even more fucking retarded. You stupid fucks. So anyway, there's a method behind my madness of trying to scare people. It's because I want to see him change because I look back on my life and I know that being super scared caused me to change. And I realize what a bunch of pansy fucks we're dealing with on this planet right now. Who are on a fucking loop-de-loop-de-loop every fucking day of their lives and rinse and repeat. Loop-de-loop. They don't learn anything fucking new until somebody like me comes along and causes them stress where they gotta drink beer after beer after beer because they're in panic mode that they can't keep up with the fucking conversation. Instead of just admit to themselves, I can't keep up with the conversation, but at least I'm gonna learn something tonight. I better fucking stay sober. Thanks for stopping by, Brandon. They have no appreciation. They don't appreciate. They're all egotistical motherfuckers. And I'm sick of it. Who are sitting there trying to rationalize why they're smarter and they're not. I'm sick of it. So much fucking time has been lost. Years and years and years of me worrying about why don't these people understand my message. My message must be flawed. No, the message isn't flawed. Just like with Vet Titans, I had very specific people right out of the gate who said, I understand what you're doing. I'm in. And coincidentally, guys, and this is not a fucking joke, coincidentally, the guy who's my third friend, who's now surpassed the first two, 
He was one of the very first people on Facebook to message me behind the scenes before Vet Titans was even a group and just says, hey, I like what you're saying. I like what you're doing. Let me know how I can help you. I have one of the very first C8s on order. And it turned out his C8 became a lemon because he lives on a steep hill. So you know the third guy is a good dude. You know he gets it. You know he's just there. He's present. And he's not an alcoholic. And I look back. Okay, this is where this all circles. It just keeps going around and around a vicious circle. The girl that I spent a lot of time with, who I thought was like my dream girl, she was different the second time around when I hung out with her. She did like to drink alcohol. I think she was probably on some sort of pills, whether it was birth control or something more. She just wasn't who she used to be. And when you take these substances, I think that it blocks your tiny little cells from being able to communicate with the universe. We have the saying, my gut says that this is a bad idea. I highly believe that your gut is a brain and so do the people in India who eat, this is topic number four, <laughs> okay? Turmeric, okay? You're like, what the fuck is this guy doing now? I started eating turmeric roots the other day. I was in Meyer. I'm up here in Ohio. I'm in Meyer. I buy this bag of turmeric roots. I'm like, you know what? They're supposedly superfoods. I don't normally eat them. I don't eat food with them very often. I'm just going to force myself to eat these things and see if I feel better. Because I know I love sweet potatoes. I know I love eating sweet potatoes. I know I feel better when I eat spinach. I know I feel better when I eat uh, plain mushrooms that don't have all the butter and bullshit added to them. Our food has basically all these artificial flavors. Okay, artificial flavor enhancers. That's where they hide the chemicals that give you cancer. That's where they hide the stuff that causes you the inflammation. Everybody thinks it's just sugar. No, 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 it's these flavor enhancers. And it's not the GMOs as much as it's the chemicals that they spray on the crops that the GMOs allow them to spray on the crops. Now you're eating those chemicals, okay? So they've got you guys Jedi mind tricked where you're always a layer away from truth. You think sugar's the problem instead of the flavor additives. You think the sugar's the problem. Th and then you think that the GMOs are the problem instead of the chemicals. So I start eating turmeric. I've always had joints that snap, crackle, pop because I've always eaten like shit. I wasn't allowed to run around as much as I wanted to when I was a real little kid because I was always riding around in a Peterbilt semi truck with my grandfather who was like my dad because I didn't have my real dad. I didn't have my biological father. My mom raised me single and she was working and I'd ride around in a big Peterbilt with my grandpa. And that's probably why I have a gyroscope in my stomach that can get to 1.2 lateral Gs or any G that I feel that the car is getting to because I grew up riding around in semi trucks around really windy fucking roads because the main road that leaves his property goes down one of the windiest roads. It's like a tail of a dragon that a semi truck can actually fit down and go about 50 to 60 miles per hour and almost lose it around every fucking turn. Regular people drive about 40 and he would go 50 to 60 because he was a good driver. And he was insecure, my grandfather was, because he grew up three farms down from Neil Armstrong. And while Neil Armstrong was walking around on the fucking moon, my grandfather's still later, still living at home with his family, getting reamed about what a loser he is. So he had self-esteem issues. So then he's reaming us. My stepdad's family, a bunch of braggy, insecure motherfuckers, because they are trying to be like their grandfather who used to run around with Al Capone. Facts. Photographs of it. Their grandfather was a fucking badass. My great-grandfather on the stepside family used to run with Al Capone and never got in trouble. He was a badass. Owned big businesses. I have all these fucking insecure people in their life who are can't fucking just stay on topic when I want to talk about something serious. And the thing I want to talk about is the solution. So what does turmeric have to do with the price of eggs in China? Turmeric, when I started eating it, I felt better. I didn't even cook the shit. I just started eating it like a raw carrot. E eating a few of them out of a bag that was refrigerated a mire. The downside to turmeric is it like coats your mouth with some yellowy orange fucking gold color that when you brush your teeth three hours later, you're still spitting gold. Okay? 
if you pick your teeth with your fingernail, your fingernail is going to be orange gold color, okay? All day fucking long until you go wash your fingernail out. That's the problem with turmeric, okay? Other than that, and it doesn't taste fantastic, but who the fuck cares? Neither does a fucking pill, okay? Other than that, turmeric is fucking awesome, <laughs> okay? I don't wake up with a headache anymore. My digestion's better. I didn't even read the benefits, or if I did, I forgot them. And then I finally start reading it, and I'm like, yeah, that's everything that fucking happened to me. The headache is inflammation. My hip joints feel stronger. I feel stronger. I feel like my bones are stronger. I feel like I'm stronger. I eat a couple of these little fucking carrot-looking things before every meal now, like 10, 15 minutes in advance. That way it gets down in my stomach. And every meal I eat... The flavors are completely different now. I don't mix the turmeric in with the food. I eat it in advance, like a salad, 20 minutes in advance. I'm telling you guys this because I fucking care about your well-being, just like I care about my one of my fucking best friends, all my best friends' well-being. And unfortunately, according to Andrew, whatever the fuck his name is, the neurosurgeon, this is the third thing I'm the, the circle back again. That's why this is a vicious cycle fucking video, okay? Our cells in our brain, our neurons, reorganize themselves while we sleep. And it usually takes two or three nights for a healthy human being to have their cells reorganized to where they're actually good at whatever the task is. So if you ever notice when you try something new, you get tired, like you get brain, eye tired, sleepy, and you got to shut your eyes and go to sleep. What if those fancy little fucking intelligences that are super fucking tiny are sitting there analyzing the artificial intelligence computer, AKA the brain, and they're sitting there monitoring it because they are it and they're the ones bringing the nutrients and bringing the repair pieces to fix it all. And they're sitting there saying, hey, you know what? Whatever activity this guy's up to right now, that part of the brain is overloaded. We need to enhance that pathway right there. Put this motherfucker to sleep. Tell this motherfucker he's sleepy because he needs to shut down so there's, there's no electricity going through the fucking power lines so we don't get fucking electrocuted while we're working on the power lines. Now, granted, that's an analogy. I'm not saying there's fucking 10,000 volts running through your brain, but I'm saying this universe is a fucking fractal. The people who eat turmeric recognize, the people in India and South Asia recognize that your stomach is also your brain not just your brain brain, but your stomach is also your brain. And those are very good people. Have you ever noticed that the people in India don't engage in war? Have you ever noticed that people in Southeast Asia, they don't want to engage in war either. The only way those people get into war is when we fucking show up and divide them. You ever notice their waists are thin? They've got those perfect hourglass shaped bodies. I wonder what medicine they eat. Good question. It's not Western medicine that they're eating, guys. Turmeric is said to have all kinds of properties. It kills cancer. Do you know why it kills cancer? Because it boosts your immune system. Every fucking day that goes by, there's a war inside your body. You can either defund the police with sugar and alcohol, which met met metabolizes into sugar. You can either defund the police and think that the fucking world's ending because the fucking Doritos that you're eating are poison and your body can't overcome the poison, or you can put down the fucking Doritos, put down the fucking beer, and fucking eat some fucking turmeric, and fucking feel good, and actually be able to fucking keep up with the conversation, instead of thinking, I need to drink 10 more beers to be able to fall asleep, because this guy's gonna give me nightmares that I'm stupid. Why do I have to be the bad guy when I wanna talk about intelligent shit, which is the very fucking thing that you guys say you want fucking solved? You want a currency that the world leaders can't print more of and hand to themselves, which causes you to be their slave. Do you not? I invent it, and I can't even have a fucking conversation with it with my two fucking best friends, because they're too fucking brain dead when the conversation happens. Again, we'll blame it on alcohol, but that's the fucking fact. They're not bad people, but that's the fucking fact. I created these Vet Titans groups because I was desperate that if there's no more smart people in the world and only the stuck up bookworm idiots and there's no just common sense smart people out there, I'm in a fucking nightmare. 
And luckily I find the people through the Vet Titans group who actually have half a fucking brain. And the other 30,000 fucking vet wannabe weird jack fucks, good fucking riddance. I don't care that you don't subscribe. I'm unsubscribing from your channel. Get lost, bitch. Bye-bye, maggot. You fucking idiots. Don't learn anything new today, you fucking pieces of shit. You're scary, me. You're so scary. Yeah, because that's what causes your brain to have a fucking malfunction to where the cells in your body say we need to fix it while you sleep. And I've even told you what foods to eat. Spinach, mushrooms, sweet potatoes, chicken, and turmeric. And you know what I told my friends? I'm gonna start putting every other fucking superfood and herb into my diet and I'll eat it raw, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Now I realize mushrooms and certain things, it's better to cook them sometimes. So I do it half and half. I put the mushrooms on a plate in the microwave I nuke them for 30 seconds. I let the heat kind of equalize around the mushroom. I nuke it for another 30 seconds. I let the heat equalize. I end up cooking the mushrooms, a plate of mushrooms for a fucking a buck for a minute 30. And then I let them cool down. And those are the ones that release the special proteins that our, that our body needs once they've been cooked. I also eat raw ones when I don't have a microwave because I'm driving. And I make sure I chew them because they say you can't digest them well. Now I eat turmeric. I eat all these things now, and I feel like a fucking million bucks, even though I'm older. I avoid any processed food because they all have artificial flavors, and the artificial flavors are where they hide over 300 fucking chemicals that are literally fucking poison. Do you guys know that Harvard did a study on nicotine and said nicotine's not addictive? Did you know that that study got blasted around all of mainstream media as, ha 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 ha, I guess Harvard's underneath the pay of big tobacco. Look at this, ha 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 ha. No, it's because they didn't want you to read the study because the study went on to explain that it's not the nicotine that's addictive. It's not the tobacco even that's addictive. It's the shit that's added to the nicotine, which is literally the same shit that they fucking put in ice cream. And my best friends know that I eat ice cream from time to time when I get really depressed. The same way they drink alcohol when they get really depressed. And you know what depresses you even further? When you feel like you're fucking dying because your body's battling cancer. Next thing you know, I got these little black spots on my skin, which is called cancer. And I'm like, I'm not doing chemo. I'm going into panic because I'm thinking, I'm gonna die soon, I need to release all my patents to the world before I die. My best friends won't even fucking help me, they won't even understand the fucking invention, they're such disrespectful pieces of shit. They won't even pay me the time of day when they're sober. And what it comes down to is, in life, you're gonna have people who pass the baton. You're gonna have people who run with you only so far and you can't force people to change. You can give them one last scare to see if they're gonna change and if they're not willing to change, you run with the baton faster than they fucking can run and you move on to the next person who's willing to run at your speed. And if that person happens to then run away from you, they, they're now the ones who take the baton and they're running without you whether you like to admit it or not. You're no longer part of the equation. That could easily happen to me. I could meet somebody, explain a bunch of shit to them. Hey Brandon, I've done all kinds of research on telomerase. I eat better foods than you do. I figured this out. I'm gonna file the patent so you're too fucking worthless to file. Bye Felicia. I love it if I could fucking meet that human being. Step up, maggots. Show me what any of you fucking have. But they don't exist so far. I don't even think Elon Musk or Zuckerberg has it in them to run with my inventions. I am very cautious about releasing my inventions because I know they have huge fucking impacts on society. They will change things. And most people are like a fucking rhinoceros in a china shop. I can run real fast. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a really fast runner. Oh, cool. 
Do you want to check out my really cool china shop? Yeah, cool china shop. I can run real fast. Do you want to see? Uh, sure. <laughs> Rhinoceros in a fucking china shop. I can run real fast. Cool, you just broke all the fucking china dipshit. You invented the nuke, and now the fucking world has to lose democracy because we can no longer have it where people have access to information. We have to censor information, which means there has to be a dictator censoring the information because now nukes have been invented. Nuclear bombs and understanding molecules and atoms and how they actually work has a negative trade-off to where people can build really big fucking super weapons. It's not just the positive information where people learn about their gut health and learn about how uh, mushrooms can hijack fucking insects and how our brains repair the cables that need to be strengthened based on what you're learning and you're sucking at that day. There's a negative trade-off and it's because you guys want to build weapons because you guys are tribal fucks. If we nuke all the people in Afghanistan, then the world would be a better place. <laughs> That's all I got for that video. It's long enough. See ya.